we're at this stage right now where we we have the observations, um, the amplitude variations as a function of theta. We know these terms uh, because we we have information about uh, theta. We have the velocities. We have the, the densities. So these terms are known. And what we want to determine are the RABC terms, and of course these terms depend on the different uh, formulations that um, that we've been working with. So it just depends on which set of equations that you're trying to solve for. And um, we um, again, these are our observations, um, and in matrix form, this would be you know a matrix with the reflectivity or amplitudes as a function of time and offset. So we'd have a particular time, and then we'd have all the offsets at that particular time, and then the coefficients associated with uh, that particular, um, uh, the, each of those angles, and then we'd have these uh, terms that uh, are associated with whatever formulation is that we're interested in. This is, uh, I think the theta is hiding there. So this is the equation that we're going to be um, <coughs> going to be inverting and we're kind of want to set up the general relationship kind of conceptualize this inversion process and um, so in the inverted form we'll have a you know whereas this was a 3 by n matrix uh, we'll have a matrix of coefficients which are consist of um, three rows with n columns instead of n columns with uh, three rows. So, or instead of three columns of n rows. So we have in the inverted form, we have our ABC is equal to the inverse of this uh, matrix that we have here, uh, times our observations. So this would be the inverted form. And, and the problem that we have to deal with is how do we determine what these coefficients are. So these would be the general reflectivities. Again, the RABC terms would be the general reflectivities corresponding to the various forms of RP of theta that we've been looking at. So it could be intercept gradient. Uh, and um, uh, we'll also be talking uh, after we discuss this uh, idea of inversion and, and go through some back additional background information. We'll be talking about some poor elastic forms of this equation. So the inversion provides us with, with the ABC terms. And uh, remember these terms, these coefficients here that we've uh, been talking about in, the, um, in this representation here where we have the compressional wave uh, reflectivity, the shear wave reflectivity, and the density reflectivity that the coefficients are a function of uh, theta. And then, of course, theta will vary from nearly zero to some maximum offset. We also need to have these uh, shear wave velocities and um, as well as uh, as well as the, as the uh, density in some cases. So um, <clears throat> so you do have this need for a good velocity function and uh, information on theta, v sub b, and v sub s in order to go through this inversion process in order to get those coefficients. And uh, also just, you know, another form of the equation that we looked at was the intercept gradient form. Uh, the three terms in this, we had the um, uh, compressional wave reflectivity, the gradient, and over here we have the um, uh, compressional wave velocity delta Vp over the average velocity two times the average velocity. And uh, in this form here, uh, you know, again, uh, it just depends on which form of the equation that we're working with, what parameters that we're going to get over here after we go through the inversion process. So I always like to set up the calculations and see if I can re reproduce what I'm seeing in the papers. And uh, this is the Fetty et al. approximation here. Uh, and in Russell's uh, 2014 interpretation paper, this is his equation 8. And again, we have the uh, uh, P wave uh, amplitudes as a function of theta, and expressed in terms of these, uh, you know, the compressional um, compressional wave reflectivity, shear wave, and density reflectivity. 
I won't spend too much time on this, but you can see where my calculations are a little, little bit different than those in the um, uh, paper. The two-term approximation that I get uh, is crossing an amplitude of 0.3 at about 51 degrees, but in this uh, illustration in Russell's text, it, the three-term approximation crosses around 56, I'd say. And not to get into all the details or the differences, but just coming over here and looking at the intercept gradient relationship with the curvature term, uh, you know, with all three terms, my calculations were crossing around 54 degrees, but the three term approximation in the illustration, the intercept gradient curvature uh, uh, visualization here of the graph. Uh, is equation 12 in Russell's 2014 paper. It's crossing around uh, 58, 57, 58 uh, degrees. So I've got some differences. Um, maybe you can give this a try and tell me what I've done wrong. I, you know, I haven't been able to reproduce the results that I see here in Russell's paper. So you know, I probably made a mistake somewhere in here, or maybe I didn't. I don't know. Uh, but it, it, it's useful, at least you get familiar with the computational side of these individual uh, expressions and, of course, putting the coefficients in and so on. So there's room for error in there. I probably made an error somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> as we kind of wrap up on this short video here, we're, we're uh, considering the inverted form of RP of theta. And we've shown these two, two expressions here. We've been using the uh, compressional shear and density reflectivities are over here, intercept gradient. And we have these uh, two forms of the inversion to give us the parameters in this equation over here. And this is, this is what we're after. Uh, we can get RP of theta from the observations. These uh, coefficients can be calculated. And the problem then is to come up with this uh, inverse, uh, these inverse coefficients because we want to transform the observations into the parameters of interest to us uh, in these these different equations that we're looking at. So we're going to spend some more time on the mechanics of matrix inversion. Uh, we'll continue on with uh, some of the materials you know, presented in Russell's tutorial, and then we'll go on to recur recursive in inversion and reflectivities to obtain impedances. So we're we're kind of with our main objective in mind to um, eventually uh, leads us to a lambda rho mu rho formulation, which we'll uh, get to eventually after we, we go through the mechanics here. So again, thanks for uh, joining us and uh, uh, interested in your comments or suggestions, and we'll talk to you next time.